Welcome back to Broken's Garage. Today we're going to be showing you how to test and replace a knock sensor on a 1991 GMC Suburban R1500. Now this is probably the same for the V1500. It's probably the same for your pickup trucks, which would be your C1500s or your K1500s. Um, it's just the type of motor. It's a 5.7 350. And these were basically all the same from years 1987 through 1995. Uh, there'll be some random ones, but basically it's gonna be the same. Now, there's two different types of knock sensors that I found, one for manual transmission, one for an automatic transmission, but basically through all those years, it's two different options. Now, it's gonna be a different number if you have a 305, even though it's a V8, it's gonna be a different number or part if it's um, the four threes. So there are differences, but for the most part, for the five, seven, it's gonna be those two options. Now, the reason why we're doing this today is because I keep getting a trouble code, a, a malfunction indicating light, you know, the mill light, the check engine light. Uh, I keep getting it for code 43. Now, I've read it could be because the knock sensor is not getting any power or it's because it's getting too much power or it's, it's, it's hearing pinging. The, the list goes on to why you can get a code 43. Now, in my particular situation, there's no power on that knock sensor wire. The, the wire gets power from the knock sensor. So the, the knock sensor will, it, it's a, a, what do they call it? A piezoelectric crystal. I think is how they say it. What that does is that converts mechanical energy into electric energy. So it'll, there'll be knocking and it'll actually produce a charge and then send that to the e, ESC box. Uh, it'll send it to that box. So anyway, I keep getting knocks. Now, I don't hear it pinging. And, and as we know, pinging's pre-detonation. You don't want that. You could be getting pinging for a hundred different reasons. You know, you're running too lean because you have a vacuum leak or your fuel pumps out or, or going out or your fuel filter might be getting clogged. You could be causing pinging for a lot of things. Like your EGR could be faulty, so it's not recirculating the exhaust. I mean, there's a lot of things that can cause pinging. Carbon buildup on your pistons. I mean, there, there's so many things that can cause it, but there can also be false pings where the computer thinks it's pinging, but it's actually just rattling underneath the hood. Maybe you got rod knocks, maybe you got, you know, cam bearings that are going out or something like that, crank bearings, you know, something that's making sounds or your exhaust is a little too rumbly for it, or you change the cam and you know, there's so many things to cause that code. So we're getting in here to test why I keep getting that code. And it's random. I can go for two weeks and not get that code. And then I can go three days and get it. So, all right, we're gonna get on here and take a look and show you where that's at. It is right there next to the starter. That little pigtail, this one right here. That's your knock sensor wire that attaches to the knock sensor. Now we can get this off. Big tail's fine, I've already checked it. But see, there's your knock sensor. So, and that does go in a coolant passage, so when you take that knock sensor out, it will dump coolant all over. So if you're quick enough, you won't make a huge mess, but it will dump it. So that's, that's where we gotta go. Now that knock sensor wire that I was showing you down there comes from there, it goes up the back of the motor. There's like a little um, pipe that it goes through so it doesn't get hot and melt. And then it comes through the wiring loom and it comes to this box. It's this dark blue wire, this one right here. Now you got this wire, this was power to this. this. This wire right here goes to the computer, I believe, just like this one. And then this wire, the brown wire, I'm pretty sure was a ground. That's a ground wire, which goes and it's in the back of the block. Now we've read that you gotta have five volts on that pigtail when you, we've read when the key was off and that seems foolish, but we checked, no voltage. And then we read, well, it's supposed to be when the key's on. So we're like, okay, we turn the key on, still no voltage. And then we read, it's, it, uh, we'll do it when it's running. So we had it running and then we still had no voltage on that wire. 
And we're like, uh, it's not like that. They're like, no, it's five volts you're supposed to have on that. And then once you attach it to it, and if you back probe the wire, it'll be two and a half volts if it's working properly. Well, ours doesn't do any of that. There's no voltage on that. The voltage is produced from the knock sensor. It, there's not voltage given to it. It's given from it. So yeah, all, all of that testing was about two hours of wasting our time. So, but we're gonna show you how to test it. First, you're gonna wanna test that pigtail. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a continuity test. We're gonna get under there. We're gonna make sure that that wire, the circuit's completed. So we're gonna test up here at this, and then we're gonna test down there and connect the circuit and see if we have continuity. I have her, she's holding the wire on that end. We have it switched to this setting for uh, continuity. And then we're gonna unplug this and check that dark blue wire. Now that dark blue wire down there by the starter can be covered with anything and look like any color, but yeah, it's a dark blue wire. So now we're gonna check for continuity. See, and you can hear that we have continuity. So we know the wire's good, at least from here to down there. There's nothing wrong with it. And we did the wiggle tests. We held continuity on it and we shook the wire and harness. There was no intermittent thing. It seemed to be fine. So we know that much is good. And then we checked our ground, which is the, the brown wire next to it. You can take it off there. To make sure our ground was good as well. Now just touch a ground. Any, any ground's fine. See, and we have a ground. Now she can touch that ground back there. She can touch the ground down here in the block. She can touch this ground, She any of these grounds, and it's gonna complete the circuit, see? Maybe not this one's kinda of Nope, you gotta scrape it, just scrape it. That. See? So we know the ground's good. We know the ground's good for that as well. So we know we got power on this one, 12 volts on the red wire. The black wire goes to the computer the brown wires are ground and we know that's good and we did the wiggle test and we know the blue wire which goes to the knock sensor is good so all those are good and that box i know is good because it's it's one that i've been using for years so but i put it on this motor when we did a motor swap like four months ago now to test this sensor there's several things you can do um people say you hook up a timing light to it and have it running and then tap the side of the motor and if the timing adjusts then you know it's registering you know well not everybody has a timing light and they're not cheap but a lot of people do have voltmeters or you can get one because they can be cheap so we're going to test that now there are those two different types that fit this motor one of them it would rate at 3900 ohms and then there's one rated uh, at a hundred thousand ohms from what I understand, 100,000 ohms works for the automatic transmission. It could be the 700R4 or the 4L60, and then the other one's for the manual. Well, we know we got 100,000 ohm ones, so we're gonna show you how to check that. Now, we set it on 200,000 because we're under ohms, see resistance, the horseshoe or whatever you wanna call it. Omega. omega. Yeah, omega, anyway. So we can't test the 100,000 one on a 20K setting. So we put it on the 200,000 setting. Now with this, all you gotta do, which you can do this in the vehicle, you can do it in the vehicle. You just gotta do it the same way that we're showing you here. You could test it while it's still in the block though. You take one lead, put it on the threads, and then the other one, you put it inside the little pin tool there. Now see, as you see, it's reading 100. So, but it's gonna be 100 times 1,000. So it's 100,000. So we know that this one's omen where it's supposed to be. If it was the other one, it would be on the 20K setting, which as you see, this one won't even register in 20K. But if it was the other one, you'd be on the lowest setting, which is the 20K, and you'd be testing it that way, and it should say 4,000 ohms. So we know that's good. The one that's in the block also is 100,000 ohms. I already checked it. This is just a spare one that we had sitting on the shelf. Now, the reason why I'm doing mine, even though mine ohmed out properly, was because the nipple, or you know, the pintle, whatever, the, the center part, the white part, I can wiggle. I can grab it and 
move it. So I'm assuming mine is getting false knocks because it's vibrating in there, or at least I'm hoping that's the case and there's not some other problem. Now the next test, because we already did the wires, we know the wires are good. We just ohm tested that, so we know that's good. What we're gonna do is because they say you test it with it running and you hook the timing light on and you, you knock on the side of the motor and it should adjust the, the timing. You should see it move. Well, we're not gonna do it that way. We're gonna do it this way. We're gonna have it with the vehicle off and we are gonna switch the settings. But you would switch it normally under volts to check, you know, your voltage, right? Well, testing a knock sensor, it doesn't work that way for these particular knock sensors. Because of that crystal, it actually generates electricity in AC, not DC. So in order to test that, you have to switch to an AC setting. So we're gonna switch this all the way over to the AC. And you know where the AC is because, because it'll be the V with the little squiggly line next to it. So we're gonna go under that and we will go to, uh, we'll go to 20. All right, now we're gonna get under here and do that test so you can see exactly the voltage that it produces when a knock is given to the block. See, we're on AC settings, right? And I'm on that 20,000 or on 20. I got the one probe into the knock sensor and then the other one I have on a ground. Okay, now give her some knocks. So that produce it a little bit harder. Okay, again. Again. That one didn't do anything. Again. You actually gotta hit it though. There's not, there's not a lot of room here. Go ahead. As you can see, when a knock is given to the block, it notices it and sends a signal. So we know the knock sense is working. I don't know how well it's working. Now here's the, the technical issue. What I have on the shelf that came out of her original motor was 100,000 ohm. And what's in this motor right now, which is a 92, is also 100,000 ohm. But the replacement part, which is a part number standard um, KS6, that ohms out at 3,900 ohms. And I'll show you that real quick. So here's a brand new one. Here's your part number. And this one ohms out at, you know, 38, 39, 4,000. It ohms out at the 4,000 anyway. I've read people that had the 100,000 swapped it to the 3,900 and it ran horrible. And then I've read people that said it had the 3,900 and they swapped it to the 100,000 one and it, it, it ran horrible. Like, I, I, I don't know. I've read that people have swapped both parts over and it either helped or didn't help their, their issue. So I can either put this used one in, that's the 100,000 and hope for the best, or I can put that 3,900 one in there and see if it makes the problem better or worse. So, hmm. People say don't put aftermarket ones in there, put only Delco in and, you know, my last one, I put that KS6 in. It had the 100,000 in. I put the KS6 part number in, which had to have been the 4,000. And I drove that for like another year and a half and didn't have any problems. They claim that the actual part number that you should put in is a Delco. Uh, which is part number 213 324 and then that pigtail wire that goes for it the part number is PT 308 but I'm gonna put that that 3900 ohm one in there and see exactly what happens I mean worst case I have to swap it out but it worked on the last motor so I'm assuming it'll work on this one now as you see I was plenty prepared And somehow, I'm sure I'm still gonna get messy. Somehow. Oh, look at that, the little port's plugged up. I just don't wanna waste this awesome attire. Like, I look so good, so. Babe, you want to give me a screwdriver to poke that? Yeah. Okay.
There we go. Okay. I had it all set up and it was plugged, but we got that out just a little bit of pokage and some sediment came out and yeah. And as you see, there, there's all of it. I mean, it's not too horrible, it's some chunkies, but if you take a magnet through it, you know, a lot of that is metal. So nothing that I'm concerned with. Now, as far as torque specs, some people say just put it in there and tighten her down you know you should know when you're about to break something but allegedly no more than 15 foot pounds or i've read no more than 20 foot pounds so it's it's up to your discretion i mean as you can see it's not that crazy to change it so now here's something that's a little interesting we figured we'd test it while it's out remember how we had to knock out all that sediment well, here's some of the sediment that's built up on the tip of the knock sensor. When you ohm it to the side, you're getting your 100,000, right? But if you ohm it to the tip where that sediment's built up, you get a whole bunch of different numbers. If it's based in it all, if it's gonna be basing it off of the tip more than the sides, I mean, it could change resistance values and cause issues. Knocking that out to allow that to, that knock sensor to be more accurate, I mean, that's obviously the right choice to make. So I'm glad I knocked it out. The buildup on the end of the knock sensor made it to where its resistance value was changing, at least at the tip, not necessarily on the threads. Alright, well right now I got her out there running, warming up. That's how you test and change a knock sensor on a 1991 small block Chevy 350. Uh, like I said, it's going to be for various vehicles. Many. You know GM, they like to put it on everything. Uh, also, I wound up torquing that down to 12 foot-pounds. I went gentle and then brought it up to 12 and it felt fine. Um, the other one was definitely in further than this one is, but I haven't noticed anything, so no leaks or nothing like that. And I won't know if it fixed the code until I take it out and drive it. But uh, I appreciate you guys watching. I hope this helped you out. If you enjoyed this video, hit a thumbs up, uh, comment, subscribe, any sort of feedback. I'd appreciate it. Uh, but thank you again for watching and don't have too much fun without us.